In this project, we will numerically validate the result obtained by the paper named CFT simulation of flow and heat transfer in a zigzag channel with flow pulsation. As you can see in this slide, we have extracted the figure 1 of the paper, which shows a model of zigzag channel used in the paper. The channel model is such that the number of stages of channel oscillation in the horizontal direction is equal to 10, and the angle of channel in each of these 10 stages for modeling is assumed to be equal to 15 degrees. Several different Reynolds values, including 53, 107, 191, 266, 320, and 40, 427, were used for this simulation. Therefore, due to the ra low Reynolds values, the flow in all models is defined as laminar. The inlet velocity of water flow in different mod models varies is based on Reynolds value, but the inlet water flow temperature in all models is equal to 293.15 Kelvin. The lower wall of the zigzag channel is insulated and the upper wall has a constant temperature of 276.65 Kelvin. The main purpose of the problem is to investigate the amount of nozzle number in the vicinity of the upper wall of the channel. As was mentioned in previous slide about the purpose of this project, in this slide we have brought to you the figure which shows the nozzle number over Reynolds number and in this figure you can easily see that we have compared our CFP simulation results with the papers. The present model is drawn in three dimensions using design model software. The present model is related to a channel that has a zigzag structure in its horizontal direction, which is equal to 10 zigzag states. The angle of each of the model's ups and downs with horizontal direction is defined to be as 15 degrees. Also, the width of the channel or the vertical distance between the upper and lower walls is assumed to be equal to 8 millimeters, and the depth of this channel is equal to 1 millimeters. The meshing of the model has been done using ANSYS meshing software and the mesh type is unstructured. The element number is equal to 144,713 and a boundary layer mesh is used on the upper and lower walls of the channel. Under the general setup tab, you can see different buttons from scales to units. By clicking on the scale, a new window will appear showing you the dominant extents of your geometry. Also, under the view length, view length unit section, you can see the default geometry units, which is meter in this project. Also, under the scaling section, uh, uh, under the mesh was created in, you can change the settings uh, in order to activate the scaling factors beneath that. For example, your geometry and mesh was is designed in a software which uh, its default unit was millimeters. By activating these scaling factors, you can change this factor to your desired factors in order to set the length to the appropriate unit. By clicking on check button, uh, you will see that under the console tab, the Fluid software will start to check your mesh for any errors. Uh, also, by clicking on report quality, again in the console tab, the Fluent software will, uh, will give you the quality report for your mesh. For example, you can see the maximum aspect ratio of your mesh, uh, maximum orthogonal quality, and etc. By clicking on display button, a new window will appear, which you can see different part, parts of your geometry. Now in the appear window, which shows you the names of the different parts of your geometry, you can click and select each part and then click on display uh, so that the software will show you that part. Now there are several assumptions taken into account in this project. The first one is that the type of our solver is set to be pressure based since we are dealing with incompressible flows. Also as for the velocity formulation, we have taken the absolute formulation for this. And as for the time study, we have selected a steady time study since we didn't want our results to be a function of time. As you can see, after double clicking on the energy button in the appeared box, we have enabled the energy equation since we want to uh, account for the, for the temperature changes in our computational domain. 
After double clicking on the viscous button in the appeared box, you can see that we have enabled the laminar model since the fluid flow in our computational domain does not have a very high velocity and that our Reynolds number are very small. Now after expanding the fluid section under the materials, you can see that water liquid material have been added to this project. In order to add a new material, you just have to right click on fluid and then select new. After doing that, in the appeared window, you either can define a new material by defining its properties yourself, or you can click on fluid database button and then select from the available list of materials in the software. Now under the cells and condition section, all you have to do is to assign the water liquid material to your computational domain. To do this, you have to just double click on the float and then in the appeared window in front of the material name section, select water liquid material. Now if you click on the inlet boundary, you can see that the type of this boundary is defined to be velocity inlet. By clicking on edit, a new window will appear in which you can change the settings for this boundary. The appeared window under the momentum tab, you can see the velocity magnitude defined for this boundary is equal to 0 0.0119 for this case of Reynolds number. And as it was mentioned in the paper about the temperature of the fluid flow entering the inlet boundary, you can see that this temperature is equal to 293.15 Kelvin. And about the outlet boundary, the most important thing that we should point out is the gauge pressure defined on this boundary, which is equal to zero, which means that the flow will exit to the atmosphere. As for two volt boundaries defined in this project, both of these volts have stationary volt motion and no slip shear condition. The only difference for these boundaries is in their thermal condition. Now, as for the down wall, as was mentioned in paper, you can see that the thermal condition defined for this wall is set to be heat flux with the amount of zero, which means that this wall is insulated and adiabatic. And as for the upper wall, you can see that we have defined a temperature thermal condition and its value is set to be 276.65 Kelvin, just as the paper mentioned. After double clicking on the method, you will see that a new window will appear showing you the pressure velocity coupling. Also, you, will, you can see that uh, the spatial discretization methods are shown in this window. Also, you can change the discretization into other formats like you can change them into first order advent and the other options available for each variable under their combo list. And for the simple pressure velocity coupling, uh, the simple algorithm is kind of an iterative solver which uses a relationship between velocity and pressure correction to enforce mass conservation and to obtain the pressure field. We may also change the under relaxation factor. These factors may be between 0 and 1. Based on the simulation and the project we are doing, we may change this under relaxation factor. But remember that the values set in here are the recommended values for the pro project and we highly recommend you to not change these values. There are two ways to check that your uh, simulation process have reached convergence. Alongside the checking the residuals reaching and nearing the zero, you may define some report to make sure that and equation have reached convergence. For example, by just right-clicking on the report definition, going on the new, you are able to choose between different reports. For example, you can define a mass flow rate report on a arbitrary boundary based on your geometry and your simulation. You are able to see whether this mass flow has reached a constant value or not. If yes, it may be a sign that your simulation has reached convergence but the residual must be checked as well. Now in this project we had defined two reports, one, one to calculate the nozzle number and the other one to calculate the average temperature on the outlet boundary. 
If you double click on the Nussle report, you can see that a area weighted average type report has been defined for the field variable of wall, funk, wall fluxes and surface Nussle number under the surface of up, upper wall. If you double click on the average outlet temperature, you can see that again an area weighted average uh, over the field variable of temperature on the surface of outlet has been defined. Now the reason behind defining this report will be elucidated in future slides. After double clicking on the residuals button, a new window will appear. In the appear window, you can see the absolute criteria for equations like continuity, x velocity, y velocity, and so on. Now, when you set the software to start the simulation, there would be error between each iteration. Now, if that error is less than these criterion, uh, it conveys the meaning that uh, that equation has reached convergence. After double clicking on the initialization button, a new window will appear showing you different methods of initialization, hybrid and standard. Now, in the standard initialization method, you get to choose the first amounts and values for the first iteration of the simulation progress. These values refer to the values used in the first iteration of the simulation progress, and if you choose the values for each parameter wisely, your simulation progress will finish sooner. It should be mentioned that you can also choose the first values and in, or the initial values by just clicking on the compute from drop down list and clicking on one boundary. For example, by clicking on compute from all zones, the software will automatically average the values in different zones and boundaries and put those values in the initial values for the software. After double clicking on the wrong calculations button in the appeared section under the parameters part by just defining the number of iterations and then clicking on calculate button, the software will start the simulation process. Now, in order to define a 2D contour, we first have to define a new surface or plane for our geometry. To do this, you have to just right click on surface and then going over the new and then selecting ISO surface. Now in the appear window, say we want to generate a surface in the middle section of our geometry, which would be in Z direction. And for that, under the surfaces of constant, we select mesh and then Z coordinate. After that, we click on compute button so that the software will calculate our geometry extents in Z direction. After that, by going under the ISO values and then selecting this specific value, we will generate a surface exactly in the middle of our geometry. After defining our surface, all you have to do is to go under the graphics and then right click on contours button and then select new. After that, a window will appear and under the contours of section, you can select between your desired variables. For example, in this slide, we have selected the temperature variable and then under the surfaces section, we click on our uh, defined ISO surface, which would be the Z coordinate. After that, we click on Save our Display button so that the software will show us the contour. Now in this slide, you can see the temperature contour for this uh, range of velocity and Reynolds number, which you can compare with the paper's result. Now in order to change the variable, under the contours of section, you just have to change the variable to your desired variable again. And then after that, by, save, by clicking on Save our Display button, the software will give you the next contour. In this slide, you can see the velocity contour, uh, which you can compare it with the paper's result. In this slide, we have extracted a part of paper's text in which you can see different equations. Equation 6 shows the 
formula to calculate the Nusselt number. Now in this equation you can see that the Nusselt number uh, requires an average temperature and that average temperature is defined to be the average temperature of outlet and inlet boundary. Now as was mentioned in previous slides we had defined a report to calculate the average temperature on the outlet boundary and we're going to use this temperature and our inlet temperature and then calculate this average temperature and then we're going to implement this average temperature in the Nusselt equation in order to calculate the value of it. To calculate the average outlet temperature, you just have to double click on this report and then in the appeared window, click on compute so that the software will give you this average. After calculating the outlet temperature, by double clicking on the reference values button, a new window will appear. In the appear window, in front of the temperature section, we enter the average temperature of outlet and inlet, which is equal to this specific value. After entering the temperature value in reference value section, we go over the Nusselt number report, and then in the appear window, we click on compute again, so that the software will give us the Nusselt number value. And finally, in this slide, we have extracted our CFP simulation results and compared it with the paper's results. It should be only mentioned that in this project, we only extracted the Nusselt number for case Reynolds number equal to 191. In order to calculate the Nusselt number for other Reynolds, you just have to change the velocity in the inlet boundary settings. And then, following the same steps, you can extract the Nusselt number yourself. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. To benefit from Mr. CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com.